now we'll jump into apex concepts and syntax all right we'll talk about each item one by one and i'll try to explain you or give you a brief of what does it mean and why is it important for you and what what do, what to make of it first things first version settings okay so if you notice i created a dish for family or let's get rid of this code again and let's use wish luck class name right and notice one thing as soon as you change the class name and you hit the save button the name on the top will also change right so that means you can rename a class if you needed so you see wish me luck for apex and once you save it this will also be updated done that's how it's updated the second thing to notice the extension right if you are downloading a pdf file or a png file or a jpeg what is the extension dot png dot jpeg dot pdf dot csv dot xsls right for apex the extension is dot apxc that's that's how you tell that okay this is a apex apex class okay now the thing about that i wanted to talk about is version settings version settings define the api version that your apex class runs on now what is a version setting you understand right salesforce releases its release three times a year summer spring and winter so they do a lot of changes they bring newer things right what you were five years back now now the version of you has changed similarly the version on which code has to run also gets updated it gets upgraded that's what version settings is okay take a look at the screen do you see any version information listed somewhere if you are able to see great probably just comment down below i was able to find the version that you were talking about and you can tell me what value do you see okay so i'm talking about the api version that shows 60 here you see this value here it says 60 and you can downgrade your api version to 59 58 or probably four or five levels below what does this version mean this means the class is running on the 60th api version for apex and all the functionality or the features provided by the platform on the 60th api version will work accordingly here okay let's say on api version 59 salesforce had a the salesforce platform had a function that looked like this okay let's say i'm just giving a random example okay or let's say it looked like this this was a function available in api version 59 okay if you were to use this line in your code it would work fine on the 59th version but let's say salesforce decided ah this is not making sense this is not good we'll get rid of the star and we'll just put this to and we'll call it the same thing We'll, we'll upgrade our operator with just this value. We'll not use the star. We'll get rid of the star hereafter. So they release API version 60 with the change. So now in API version 60, if you try to use this function, it will not use. It will not work. It will throw you an error. If you use it like this, it will work. So you understood what I'm trying to say. Every version comes in with some changes, right? Some things that have, you know, been downgraded, been upgraded, been updated, been removed, been deprecated. All of that is handled by the API version that you're currently on. Okay. Does that mean that your class always has to be on the highest level? No, it does not mean that. But does that mean it is always good to be on the latest level? Yes, because things that were working with previous api versions might stop working in the newer version which means your system might break why do you want your system to break you should not right so it's always good to be on the latest api version okay but does that mean things will not run on the previous api version no nothing like that you can still have your class running on a previous version okay man i have a quiz question for you apex class 1 is running on api version 60 apex class 2 and 3 are running on ap api version 58 is it possible yes it is possible even you can you can define and declare the api version on a class level okay even that can be done so don't worry about it but what's good it's always good to be on the latest version because that's where all the latest stuff from salesforce is available Okay, now you might ask him Shu, so what is available in the API version? For that, we'll have to read the documentation, the Salesforce documentation of what has changed in the releases and what is part of the new version. Okay, that's available in the Salesforce documentation. So that was about version settings. Now you cannot have one name for two different classes or triggers. So that's a general statement. I don't know why I put it here, but you cannot have one name for two different classes. Do you want to see if I just copy this name and I create a new Apex class and I put the same name and I say, okay. So you see, it says that the name is already taken. Use a different name. 
So it's similar to how you know you have domains or your website names, right? You get only one website that is hosted is unique. Not not two websites will not open with the same name, right? The same concept here. So this is important because then Salesforce will not understand, right? Which which class are you calling? Because both are the same names, and that's the only identifier that exists. The class name. So you can only have one class name with. Uh, you can have one name per class. You cannot have two classes with the same name. That's what it means. And the same is also true for triggers, Apex triggers. Okay. The next thing we want to talk about is statements. Now comes the real thing. So you see what I did here. I put a semicolon here, right? What is what does this mean? This means that this right here, the thing that's highlighted, is a line of code or instruction that's given to the platform to execute it. Okay, I'll give you, I'll put one more instruction, integer i equals zero. I'll put one more in instruction, string name of character equals Thomas Edison, right? I can put this here, or I can say if i is not equals zero, name of character equals the Hulk. So you see, I've written a bunch of code, which is this right here. Now here, what are statements? Statements is any line that contains a set of instruction, ends with a semicolon that tells the platform, okay, you have to execute this line at once. So out of all of these lines, tell me which lines are statements. Out from 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Comment down below which all lines are statements. Take a look at the statement definition. A coded instruction that ends with a semicolon and performs a specific action is a statement. Okay. And let's assume, and I, I can tell you that four is a statement. You tell me about these lines, which of these are statements. Take a pause, write a comment and come back for the answer. All right. So you see this line right here tells the system that I want to define a variable that's called i. It should be equal to zero and it ends with a semicolon. This is a statement. It is a coded instruction. Same is with this particular line. Same is with this particular line. But is this a statement? No. It just says if i is not equal to zero. Okay. Okay. What do I do? Is it a set of instruction given what to do? No which is why this is not a statement. Plus, it also tells you because there's no semicolon here, so it's not a statement. Similarly, this line is not a statement. This line is not a statement. But this bit right here is a statement because it tells you that the name of the character should be the Hulk and it ends with a semicolon. Okay, so we sorted out that this bit right here is a statement. These are statements and this is a statement. So then, what is this bit right here? What is this called if this is not a statement? This is called a block. So a block is a set of statements put together surrounded by curly braces. What are curly braces? Curly braces are this right here, right? We have a lot of braces, right? This is one, this is two, this is three. These are square brackets, these are curly braces, and these are round brackets, right? And these are angular brackets, you can call them. Okay, always be aware of what kind of braces because because I, I, I even even know a lot of people who say they are, you know, experienced Salesforce developers and they don't even understand, you know, what kind of braces are used where. All right. So all braces have their different names and different meanings and it is always good to know which one is being talked about. What are these? These are all curly braces. Do you see a round bracket somewhere here? If you see it, tell me where. Yes, so it is on the if condition here, correct? And it is also on the method. So you cannot create a method with curly braces. That will give you an error. It always has to be this round brackets. Only then it will su succeed. Okay, so that's why the bracket nomenclature is also important. But right here, what was our discussion? It was that this particular section is a block. Why? Because this contains a set of statements that need to be executed and they are surrounded by curly braces. So this is a block. This is a block. And finally, the entire class is also block. Okay, and you'll notice one sign given by the developer console to understand that, okay, this is a block. See this sign right here? This can open and close a block section. See, open and close a block. So this tells you everything inside this particular curly brace is a block. 
everything inside this curly brace is a block so open the class open the method open this if condition block three blocks are available so that's what is the meaning of a block a set of statements that put together surrounded by curly braces okay awesome <laughs>